even brought my Bible, the evangelicals, okay? We love the evangelicals. And we're polling so well. This Bible was given to me. I won't tell you the year because it'll start saying, wow, that's a long time ago, right? Well, that was Donald Trump at a rally in Iowa last night, touting the good book and tapping into that religious base. Now, uh, also suggesting that perhaps Ted Cruz, you know, coming out of Cuba, maybe not an evangelical. And why is that important? Well, listen, the roles of evangelicals, billionaire backers uh, throwing their money around. Uh, someone's going to ultimately help decide who wins this race, not just the voter. And a lot of people think, at least in Iowa, it will be the evangelical. So back with me. I've got the panel. And uh, Todd Starnes, uh, Charlie, Charlie Kirk, Gina Loudon, and Tammy. And, and Todd, let me go to you first. You know, the, 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 the inference Donald Trump was making yesterday is that, you know, you can't come out of Cuba and be an, <laughs> an evangelical. Mm. Yeah, I'm waiting for that YouTube moment where Donald Trump puts on a choir robe and uh, sings How Great Thou Art or something <laughs> of that nature. You know, as the resident evangelical here in uh, New York City, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I'm not sure Brother Donald is going to have a good showing uh, when it comes to Iowa. Uh, because as, as you know, and this has been proven time and time again, Charles, uh, Mitt Romney is a great example of that. He poured millions of dollars into places like Iowa and came out a loser. Mm -hmm. So I think what in, in Iowa especially, the, the folks there understand the real deal. And that's why I believe Ted Cruz has the upper hand and he's probably going to win Iowa because he is the real deal. And I'm not sure that they're going to connect with Donald Trump. You know, uh, 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 Charlie, uh, I remember the uh, Family Values uh, Gathering, uh, you know, uh, v evangelical event, the straw poll taken later. Uh, uh, Trump did not win that. He came in fifth place. So to Todd's point, this is this is serious. But how important is it beyond Iowa to, to win this this niche of the GOP? Uh, very important, especially with the new map redesign. And if you look at the states that come after the traditional first three, which is Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, nine out of 10 of those states are in that kind of what you would call the Bible Belt. That's the SEC primary, if you will. It, enc it encompasses states like Alabama, uh, Georgia, Oklahoma, the Dakotas, uh, states where the evangelical uh, voting block is really 70, 75, 80 percent in some of these states. So the, the, the media is really trying to make it seem like the evangelical uh, base is just one in Iowa. It's not true. There's a really argument to be made that the evangelical block is going to determine this next nominee, especially because of the way that the map has been designed uh, heading into these next couple yeah. months. You know, Gina, we hadn't heard much about the Koch brothers, but an article in Politico today points out that their network, uh, I think, raised almost $900 million. So without a doubt, they are going to be a force. How much of a force? I mean, have we put too much emphasis on the fact that, that billionaires play such a role? Uh, maybe it's overstated. Billionaires do play a role, Charles, and they have played a role going back to Nelson Rockefeller and J.P. Morgan. They played a role in election cycles, but this time is different. We're seeing completely different things, and it's not just the Trump factor. I think part of it is that, you know, conservatives have really risen up and realized that they must engage or they're going to continue to have candidates shoved down their throat like uh, the, the uh, John McCain, like Bob Dole, like Mitt Romney. And this time, I think they're not going to sit down for it because I think they really, truly believe, maybe for the first time ever, that their children's future is at stake. Tammy, uh, you know, we know the stakes are high, and we do hear this almost every year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, so far, this has been different than anything we've probably seen in our lifetimes. Yep. Ultimately, though, who's the power broker? Well, look, I think one thing Barack Obama showed us in 2008 is that there could be a new power broker, and that's each individual using the Internet to have an impact and to give money. Mm. So we're seeing that now as well. I think the unknown, the unexpected, the person who's going to be able to use that, and, and Bernie Sanders has been able to use it a lot, it makes us as individuals more of a player because we can collectively put our 10 and $20 together to make the difference. Right. Add that in. Ted Cruz knows how to use it. Marco Rubio is trying. Mm -hmm. and we'll see what happens on the ground. And Facebook has worked pretty well for Ben Carson in terms yes, it, of raising yes, money, but yes. Donald Trump, almost 5.5 million followers. That's an army right there, the Trump train. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Hey, by the way, you don't want to miss Fox Business' next.